How's it going, Jack? Uh, it's going all right, you know. Uh, we're recording this on Valentine's Day. Amen. So happy Valentine's Day, Shep. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Amen. Uh, <laughs> all right. I think I, I think that's everyone. I think that's everybody I'm going to talk to today. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said something to my roommate this morning. I texted my sister. Uh, I knew I would be talking to you. So, and I think I'm done. That's Rock everyone. On. Yeah. It's only, <laughs> whoever I'm speaking to that day gets it. Otherwise, just <laughs> feel the love on another day. You know. I started a debate at a. Uh at the local stop and shop about Valentine's day. Cause, uh, <laughs> as you know, I, uh, I Valentine's day in my house is M&M's day, right? We, uh, oh, right. I give yeah. Gabby M&M's every year for Valentine's day. I find a different way to do it. Mm-hmm. So this year I was going to give her, uh, I'm going to give her one, val- one M&M for every year we've been married. Right. So I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm haven't figured out the configuration yet. Okay. But that's what I'm doing. All right. So I go shopping for the house at the local stop and shop mm-hmm. yesterday. And I realized, oh yeah, I haven't gotten the M&M. So I went back in and I literally go to the checkout area, grab a whole box of M&Ms mm-hmm. and just start scanning until I hit 15. And the, the dude has, you know, he asked me questions because it kept messing up the self checkout. Cause M&Ms are just light enough to not register. Okay, so I kept sure. needing his help, you know? So right. he's like, why do you need all these M&Ms? He's like, it's for Valentine's day. And and then, like, uh, we had another issue, so his supervisor comes over, and she's like, what's going on? He's like, he's buying M&M's for Valentine's Day. And he's like, and she's like, for Valentine's Day? That's mad cheap. And then, <laughs> and I'm like, well, like, it's a thing we do. Instead of doing Valentine's Day, we do this. We've been doing it for 20 years. And then the dude's like, oh, that's that's kind of sweet. And she's like, nah, that sounds cheap. And, like, they were fighting with each other about my tradition. Wow. <laughs> the whole rest of the checkout. They're like, how long y'all, how long you been getting away with this Valentine's Eminem nonsense? I'm like, 20 <laughs> years strong. <laughs> this yeah. is great. Uh, Valentine's Day is so nothing brings out the arguments, I think, like Valentine's Day in a way that it's just like there's no room for a day that's dedicated to love, there's no room for acceptance. Yeah. <laughs> it's Yo. only love there's no acceptance <laughs> so you have to show you love someone in the very precise way that some stranger thinks you're supposed to do it and there's no acceptance if you do it a different way and it's Yo. wild to me um the pressure yeah it's a lot of pressure i've only had i've only been in an instance where i've been dating someone on a valentine's day once and okay. It was disastrous. Seems like such a big word, um, <laughs> but I I was young, um, and this guy was two. He was a little bit older than me, but you know we're two uh, kids. I'm like 19. He's like 24 or something like that. Yeah. And um, I don't even know if I did. I tell you about this situation. I don't think so. Okay. We don't get a lot of like 19 year old shy love stories. Yeah, uh, no. Well, there's only the one and this is <laughs> this is it. And you'll see why there's not much to share. Um, uh, so we we were dating and I was not working at the time. I had just dropped out of uh, college and uh, looking for work and I hadn't really found anything yet. So um, Valentine's Day rolls around. Uh and I cannot, for the life of me, remember what this dude got me. But I'm, I think it was, um, probably like CDs. And I uh. say CDs because he worked at a record store, so okay. that's probably that would have been the safest bet for me. Um, was to get me some sort of CDs I wasn't able to just walk into some place and get anyway. I'm sure <laughs> it was something like that. Um. I, you know, again, didn't make much money. Uh, so I try to identify a need. What's the thing that you need? Um, and he needed a hamper. So okay. I went out and got him uh, a hamper, kind of a nice hamper for his room. Because, you know, oh, yeah. he's throwing his clothes in the corner. Here's a hamper. He got so upset that ah. I did not spend enough money on his present. And maybe he got me something more than CDs. I don't know. but he. 
whatever reason, because I'm like, why would you be mad? It's not like you spend a lot of money on these CDs. You work in the store. Um, but I truly, it wasn't something that was like, you know, it, he certainly didn't give me something that I've cherished for a year to year. Clearly. <laughs> what albums were they? How about that? I'm not even sure that they were. <laughs> I don't even, I'm not even sure that's exactly what I got. So. Yeah, no, nah, that. You would remember if they were like good albums. Yeah, if it was something important. Like, I remember he gave me my first CD player. Okay. Like strong. around Christmas and gave me um, a box set of Depeche Mode singles that okay. had come out. So, see, I remember when it's important, I remember. Yeah. Right? When it's, so that's why I'm like, I have no idea what this dude got me because it wasn't, you know, <laughs> not that important. Um. Or it didn't stick out as something like, holy crap, you really, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, but also, I'm working within my means. So I got him this hamper. And I, sure, that's probably a cheap gift and not very romantic. But my man needed a hamper. <laughs> and I was over there all the time. So I got him a hamper. He was furious. And he was like, you didn't spend nearly enough for this Valentine's Day gift. And he took me to the Gap and he forced me to buy a chambray shirt for him, like a, a light denim button up shirt for him. He forced me to buy it because he was like, what you bought was not enough. Yo. So it's fuck Valentine's from that point on. I was 19. I ain't been with anyone Yo. on a Valentine's. And I, I'm like, nah, I'll, you know, if I love you, I'll, I'll get you something on another day. It does not have to be oh my yeah. god wild wild mm -hmm. yo lo like that might be the most toxic masculinity story i've ever heard in my life yo that's wild yeah good stuff <laughs> yo. i haven't even i haven't um with the knowledge that we have now about toxic masculinity and um with the uh uh you know looking back on our lives and really assessing what situations were what was actually going on in your life. Like yeah. now that we have the vocabulary and the understand, blah, blah, blah. I don't feel like doing it. Who wants to unpack that? I don't feel like unpacking that. <laughs> it's back there for that's a reason. back there. Hey, you know, that's back there. That's the one that I feel like we're calling. I don't feel like we're calling anything else. Let's just, mm -mm. <laughs> you know, as well, that dude, I promise you, cause I know guys like that. Mm -hmm. I promise you that guy, has told that stories to his friends bragging. Yeah. Oh, sure. Real talk. He's like, oh, and she bought me this. I made her yeah. go buy me another shirt. And now yeah. realizing he's telling all his homies how trash he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, you know, but I'm sure his homies at the time were probably, well, I don't know, because I'm still friends with some of his homies. But, yeah, like it's, it's but they also, I mean, they every, all of them had moments of that because they were young yeah. men, and that's what they were. They were. That's how you grow not, up. Yeah. Yeah, not good uh, folk, yeah. you know, who was, really. So, um, yeah, I I just, I'm just like, nah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, happy Valentine's. <laughs> That's about <laughs> it. I don't even want the chocolate. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really get down with chocolate like that. No one's making uh, Valentine's uh, cinnamon rolls. So, you know, what's what are we doing? That's real. <laughs> You know, that you, said, I am a true romantic. I swear I am. <laughs> you also, uh, one of the few uh, arguments Gabby and I had when we first uh, moved into our own place was actually around your gift. I, uh, I could not understand what was the difference between a hamper and a trash. What do you mean? Like, if I'm shopping, uh -huh. like I, she told me to go buy a hamper. We needed a hamper. Uh -huh. I bought a trash bin, according to Gabby. And she's okay. like, yeah, so this is a trash bin. I was like, it's a hamper if you want it to be. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it does everything the hamper does. Oh, uh, no. And like, on top of that, I could step on the little thing on the bottom oh, and the lid no. pop up. None of the hampers do that. So okay. <laughs> I thought it was a, a plus. Uh -huh. She's like, nah, this is a trash can. This is not a hamper. And right. I was like, what, what, what criteria does the hamper have that the trash can doesn't meet? Mm -hmm. You show me that and then I'll return it. 
Okay. And she couldn't think of one. And we had a trash can that was angrily made into a hamper that she brought up all the time. Like, it was the only, like, there's no reason for me to hear the hamper banging. But I heard it bang every time we had to do the laundry. Right. Like, she was mad at it because it was, like, an argument that I won. Uh-huh. On print, like, but I knew, I, was, I feel like I was right still. I don't no, know you what. you were not. You absolutely were not. <laughs> what makes what makes a, a hamper not? is going to have some way to uh, have air move through it because if you just put dirty clothes in there and there's no way of air to get in other than you hitting the fucking foot pedal for the top to open, yeah, you let it, you, let it um, air. you can it'll uh, mildewed things can get mildewed because not everybody is throwing dry towels or dry washcloths or whatever in. A hamper. Sometimes they're like, this is still a little damp, but um, it's done. Let me toss it in the hamper. You need air to kind right. of. And so if you look at most laundry baskets or hampers, they have some sort of holes for circul- air circulation so that stuff doesn't just con- <laughs> and get like mildewy. Right. So that was the only argument she had. I argue against that because I feel like. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because my thing, yo, I don't want to smell right, that. You're with your musty ass. Fine, <laughs> go on. I don't want to smell the, the the dirty laundry. That and like the trash has nastiest shit that we put in it. Uh-huh. We don't want to air that out. We clean the trash every like couple like weeks. Uh huh. So why can't we clean the hamper every couple weeks instead of for the sake of the mildew? We all gotta smell nasty laundry every time I open this door. I'd rather well, have it contained. You don't. And then if when you it's have a hamper it, with the holes, you don't smell. It It has less of a chance of mildewing because air is coming through the dry out, whatever wet stuff you put in there. But if it, you're, if it's, there's no air to get in there to dry it out, it's just wet and being pressed by the weight of more clothing. Then it's, then you get the mildewy smell because it never fully dried out because you're putting more stuff on top. So that's why you need the air to get in and circulate. I mean, you guys, got, are we, to, y'all are up got, to 15 bags of M&Ms now. Y'all good. I mean, y'all so, are good. Yeah, like, we, we, got the, we got the holy, the whole containing hamper now. Right, But, yes. like, that first place, I, I, I was like, nah, I'm keeping this trash can. I bought it. It's great. I can mm-hmm. step on it. It opens up. You know, it's durable. I could throw this shit everywhere. She banged it every day. And that shit still lasted. It was good. I get, uh-huh. matter of fact, I didn't even throw it out. I gave it away. <laughs> to someone who used it Real as a talk. trash I was can? like, yo, I don't know. <laughs> it was a single dude, so I don't know what he's doing with it. It might be oh, multitasking. Oh, boy. He's prob- he probably cooks his food over it. He probably Straight puts up. a I fire told him. at the bottom, and then he cooks his horrible raw meat over the top of it. I'm sure. Straight up. He just cooks beans and Franken beans. <laughs> I told him it was a hamper. You know, I was like, yeah, this is a modern hamper. Some futuristic <laughs> one is metal. You know? Uh-huh. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I stand by. You gave that guy a great gift, okay? <laughs> you know? Oh, look, I will look, I'll With concede it's not it, trash. I will say it's not a great gift, right? But mm-hmm. here's what you're doing. You're dating an unemployed girl yeah. who's doing her best. You know no, what I mean? Not, she thought of you. It was specific to you. Yeah. Y- you know, she she doesn't really know how to cook, but you also really know how to eat. So, you know, like, what do we... Yo, and low-key of all the things, that's probably the thing that's still around, all those gifts. Yeah, he probably had that hamper for a minute because he didn't yeah. return the hamper. Yeah, he, still he just wanted more. He used the hamper. He just didn't think I spent enough money on him. Um, Which, I mean, it's just like, I don't, I don't know what to do with that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I... I spent the amount of money that I had yeah. on you. I'm sorry it's not to your standards, but fucking hire me. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. But yeah, I was just, it was, it was uh, um, just horrible. It was just horrible. So disastrous, again, feels like overblown, uh, uh, an overblown term to use. But yeah. I know in my 19-year-old pea brain, it was one of the lower moments I had felt in, in my oh, life yeah. at that time. So I was just like, well, this is 
Yep. Screw that dude, yo. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's a nice guy now. I don't know. But like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. you know, I, I'm i sure he is. There have been other issues. Um, but he's still, <laughs> like, I, if I see him again, oh, we could probably talk for a couple of hours before I'm like, all right, we're done. And that's good. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. I, low, I feel like I would ask him for my shirt money back if I was you. Man, I don't even know why he need that was shirt wasn't even his style. <laughs> that shirt wasn't even his style. You can't pull this off. That's what I was just like, where are you gonna wear this fucking shirt? You literally buy wear band t shirts and shorts all year round. <laughs> where are you gonna wear this shirt? <laughs> Me not buying this for you is the present. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm trying. I don't want I you look to look like a fool out there. You know, I looked at it. I said, no, you deserve to never wear this. Oh, okay. Man. I don't want this in the hamper I'm getting you. You know? Also, no clue that he would have wanted that shirt. Do you know what I mean? He never said, if there's a thing you had an eye on. Yeah. Because I feel heads. like we walked in and he walked right to the shirt and he said this. And I'm like, well, bro, why <laughs> didn't you just say that that's what you wanted? You gave me nothing. You know? I'm looking around. If you don't, that's the other thing is I'm not good with gifts. I need you to tell me what you want. And if there are a few things, give me options and I'll figure something out. But if you want something from the goodness of my heart, sorry, I'm too selfish to think about what you want. Tell me. <laughs> tell me. Tell me what you want. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, love, I, I want a chalet with gift giving guy uh, this year. That'd be great. It's just going to be a notepad. <laughs> it's gonna be a notepad and a pen. That, yo, that'd be fire if like you wrote a <laughs> gift getting guy and it's a notepad with a list of like notepads. <laughs> yeah, some people already <laughs> probably already have that. But yeah, that's what my that's what my gift giving guide would be is just a notepad and you write it down. I like you write it. down what you want. <laughs> that's that's what it is, and give that to the person that you think has enough money to pay for it. Amen. <laughs> Let's get into the news. <laughs> oh man, kick it off. Uh the Super Bowl breaks ratings records. That's oh. right. Uh thanks to an exciting game that went into overtime. Uh Usher and the power of Taylor Swift. Not the uh, power of fucking Taylor Swift. <laughs> that yeah. is the wildest thing. <laughs> the, hey. the, look, I'm I am in no way a Taylor Swift person. Um, for the most part, although your girl is kind of killing me now, like I want her to take a nap. I want her to just go somewhere and chill. Yeah. She's been on our necks for a long time and it hasn't yielded great stuff. It's just more of the same to me. And mm. the idea that she has another album out, I'm just like, take a nap, bitch. Everybody needs to take a break so that we can miss you. You're not letting us miss you. And now that's why people are annoyed with you because you won't shut the fuck up. Word. That's my feeling on Taylor Swift right now. But other than that, I really don't think about her unless she's all in my face, which is what she's been doing for the past like four years. Too much. Um, yeah. But I think if I were <laughs> the stereotypical Taylor Swift fan, I would be offended that you think that just the idea of her in a, a skybox somewhere is enough to make me watch what is one of the biggest events in this country for decades. Yeah. But it takes this bitch to be up there for me to be like, I think I'll watch it now. No, I knew it was around. <laughs> I knew, I it. knew, you know what I mean? Like other people have performed at half times that made me go, all right. Or someone had a party and I'm like, well, they have wings and you go cause they have wings. Like, it's no. not foreign to me. So the idea that it's like, and Taylor Swift drove by and people went, ah, I gotta watch is ridiculous. I would be offended if I were one of y'all people who were fans of her. You heard it, Swifties. Okay. They're yeah. calling y'all, yeah, they're calling y'all simple. They are. Don't let Real them. Talk. I mean, you, I mean, you are, but don't let them do that to you. <laughs> You don't need to take that. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't take that. Just sit down. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the Chiefs won 25 to 22 over the 49ers and uh, averaged 123.7 million viewers across all CBS platforms, according to Nielsen, uh, making it the most watched Super Bowl of all time. 
It's also now the most watched program in TV history. Uh, also, CBS broadcasted 120.3 million viewers, uh, the largest audience in history for one network. The other uh, 3.5 uh, came from those who watched it on other platforms like uh, CBS's television network, Paramount Plus, Nickelodeon, Univision, CBS Sports, so on and so forth. Uh, they also got some comparisons to other events. Uh, there's like uh, Super Bowl 20 from last year had 115 million. Um, most of the others before that seem to crack around 114 to 111. Okay. Uh, Do we think that maybe this is because there are multiple ways to watch it, not just sitting in front of the TV? Yeah, I think that's a big part. I mean, this was the perfect storm, right? You could watch it on other apps, A. Eh? You have Yeah, I watch it on Paramount Plus and I only watch for Ursher. Only for Ursher. <laughs> I watched Ursher and then I sat there for a second, like, I feel like there's something else I'm waiting on. And then the Beyonce commercial came on. And I went, Oh yeah, I guess I'm done now. And then <laughs> I, went, <laughs> I went to bed. <laughs> and Yo. I almost didn't see Usher. I was in bed like for the night. That's right. And real. my sister called and was just like, You ain't gonna watch Usher? I was like, girl, I don't know if I can make it. ATL's um, finest right there, yo. I know. So she, I talked to her for a while, and then I was awake enough to watch it. Oh, but, yeah. But, yeah, yo, even I, she every was just time, like, maybe. Usher's a problem for me, Sha, because every time he comes on for, like, a solid two weeks, I think I could dance. Look, like, let, me, let me tell you something. The way men, especially men of color, especially, especially black men, love Usher, mm -hmm. it's like it's like nothing I've ever seen. Yo, I, like I didn't even realize it um, until uh, I met a lot more comedians when I moved to New York and met comedians from all over, and which meant meeting a whole bunch of dudes. <laughs> Is what meeting comedians from all over <laughs> just means meeting a whole bunch of dudes <laughs> and someone having some sort of karaoke night. Uh, at like the creek in the cave or something like that. Um, yeah. And almost every black guy and a lot of white dudes went up and did an Usher song. Different Usher songs. Knew every <laughs> word. Didn't have to look at the screen at all. Sang with their eyes closed. And I went, what is happening? <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah, yo. Why? And <laughs> turns out we all love that dude. It's very funny to me. Yo, he's the homie, dude. <laughs> so he yes. the only dude that like make me not change the lyrics when I say the dude's name. Okay. Like every time I sing every other song, I find a way to pivot it to gas store, but not I spell out his whole name. You know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's me. U S H. <laughs> oh, that dude's he's dope, man. He's chilling. He the only dude I like. I'm okay with being shorter if I gotta be him. You know, like, yeah, I'll be five, <laughs> yeah, four. Yeah, no, cool. that's true. That's true. He is, he is just an average height is what's wild. Completely right? he's fine like, with it. Yeah, he's like 5'8", maybe, 5'9". Yeah. I, 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 I feel like he's shrinking, and he's like, he was 5'8", at, like, the peak of his powers. You mean but when yeah. he was, like, 16 or something? Yeah. Also, like <laughs> <laughs> when he um, took his shirt off during the performance, I just went, there it is. Because I'm like, well, how how did he go this long without taking his shirt off? You got to build up. He's storytelling, Sha. I guess so. But I was like, Spence. I said to my roommate, I'm like, I have been looking at this man take his shirt off since the <laughs> late 90s. And I, I'm like, uh. Only take it off <laughs> once during the show. That's what, that's the innovation I want to see from Usher. Okay. You take this to the next level, Usher. I want you to figure out a way to keep taking your shirt off. I think he did when he did his uh, residency in Vegas. He only had 13 <laughs> minutes. So you understand? So it's he like can only 13 shirts keep coming off. Yeah, he can always only do it tested. like once. You know, he he still had to get the roller skating in, which was great to see the people's reaction to like yo. he can roller skate. I was like, didn't he say he was from the A? <laughs> yo, talk, yo. they serious about that roller skating in Atlanta? Like, yeah, of course he can roller skate. That man but can do all things. He also went through, in his roller skating thing, he did some trick where he went between um, Will I Am's legs. Yeah. Like, underneath. And that's wild, because Will I Am is roughly three feet tall. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, like, that's not a tall dude either. 
Actually, I think that's Usher's trick is that almost every dude up there with him, except for Luda, was a little man. It was a little, <laughs> it was a little Will I Am. Dupree. It was a, t- a baby Jermaine Dupri. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, Lil John is Lil John. Yeah, which, real tough. Um, my sister said the funniest thing. I've tweeted it out, but it's so funny when she said it to me because then I talked to her after the show uh, so that we could break down what we thought of it. And she said, you know, I've seen Lil John so many times because back in the day when when the Sharp Sisters were out in the streets, we saw many people all over the place. So <laughs> Zakia saw a lot of folks at a, an old club called The Warehouse in downtown Atlanta. And she saw Lil John before he was Lil John, right? Right. He was just some little pipsqueak of a dude. But she said always in like an oversized shirt or an oversized jersey and baggy jeans. Um, and so she's seen him in per- plenty of times, but that's the only way that he's been dressed. Okay. And she realized this was the first time that he had on, he didn't have that on. He didn't have on baggy oh. jeans. He didn't have on a baggy shirt. And she said, seeing Lil John's form was kind of weird. <laughs> like seeing his actual <laughs> body shape. <laughs> she was like, not gonna lie, it was a little strange. <laughs> 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 and that honestly explained because i was like you know what i think i actually feel that, that way too i just realized that's what that feeling was he was in a form-fitting outfit nah. and i was just like oh. i'm not ready for this no we were not <laughs> we were not what did you think uh, other outside of wanting to dance for the next two weeks how, how else did you feel about the uh his performance I thought it was good, honestly. Like, uh, I enjoyed it personally. Um, I uh, my main issue had more to do with the audio engineer. I I I enjoyed that they tried to keep an element of uh, him actually being heard, but I do think you need to like only incorporate that like when he's talking. Like, you can't dance in rollerblade and also sing peak. I think so, that like, was. I think that was his decision. Yeah, I think that's why he wild. gets he gets real. He wants you to know that he's singing this shit. Yeah, I so, know he. I know he can. Yeah, I'm not but, doubting that. But like, homie, you you about to be fifty. You rollerblading. <laughs> it's a whole field, my G. A whole yeah. field. You know what I mean? Yeah, You're it was a whole, it, He yeah. was doing a lot. That's the most effort I've seen him do. Usually, his moves, everything is like effortless. But that's yeah. the most I've seen him like trying. Like, really do effort but i also appreciated that i was like oh but he's singing that right now yeah i would have been cool a live song from before like you pre-recorded this live performance i think that's what most of them do and then sing over that track so i i don't know i kind of i get what you're saying but i also like the idea of him doing it live and like dropping out but i i wish that um but I, I enjoyed it. I I, I love the Alicia Keys duet. Um, I love the real yo. I'm I, admittedly I don't know if I heard anything. I, I'm I'm in love with the lady. Okay, she looked oh, great. Oh, okay. So you 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 She's didn't New hear New York that. as hell to me. You didn't hear you know the I mean? uh. You didn't hear the note. The first note. I didn't hear anything, Sha. Okay. So <laughs> red. Uh, <laughs> she wasn't standing up when she hit the first note. You still could have heard the first note. It's very funny this narrative that's that's come about of that Alicia Keys can't sing. Cause I don't think that she can't sing. She can sing. She yeah. just refuses to sing in the range that she is supposed right. to. Yeah. She, she got- keeps thinking she can sing higher. And I'm like, baby, you're screaming. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's not, you know what I mean? So uh, everyone, when they announced that she was going to be there, everyone's like, Oh, now this bitch, she can't sing nothing. And I was like, <laughs> being real hard on her, like, let her go. And then she, that first note was, uh-huh, and I'm like, I get it. I understand how that happens, but oh, sweetie, have you been on Twitter? Do you know what they no. say? They're going to rip you apart. But then she stood up and took that cape off, and I was like, oh, no one's going to remember this. At all. And the NFL, when they reposted it on YouTube, they fixed that first note. They know. They, they know what's up. It, so you can't tell. And I was just like, nah, that's okay. She looked really good in that red outfit. She looked great, yo. She had a little, a little fupa. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, I think that was the um I think that was mostly the uh the corset. Okay. I, don't know. I was with a little it. bit. 
But <laughs> but I mean that also could be her. I mean she ain't she's no spring chicken either. Yeah, I thought it was great. Like oh yeah, like you look good for your age. I think that's fantastic. I yeah, was with I, it. I always forget she's got really great hips and thighs, and she moves as such. And I'm like, why are you just sitting behind the piano? But you know. For the well, same so, reason that she doesn't wear makeup, quote unquote, because she wants to keep it real or some shit. I don't know. Listen, I'm I'm on board. Yeah, you know what I mean, I was with it. I got to see Little John yell. Yeah, you know what, what I mean? about Usher when Rola Luda Blayton. showed up? Was I don't I don't know why I didn't ex- not that I didn't expect him. Of course he would be there. Yeah, he's gonna do yeah. I don't know. It just didn't enter my brain. So when he showed up, I went, oh, Luda's there. Like, yeah. very- <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like everybody went, oh, Luda, even though I am well aware <laughs> that Luda is doing plenty. He just opened for um, Janet Jackson on her last tour. Like, yo, Luda working, year. yo. Luda's doing <laughs> stuff. It wasn't like he crawled out. Of- I know that Luda is actively working, but Straight he showed up. up. I was like, oh, will you look at that? <laughs> well, Luda's here. Real talk, Luda out here grinding, yo. He even yeah. on like Luda's on like freaking grimy current hip hop songs. They're yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah, like he out here, he doing shit with like JID and like Conway the Machine. Oh yeah, like, that was a great doing, song. Yeah, I really liked like that song. Yeah, no, Luda's on top of it. Honestly, give Luda the halftime show. Give. I would Luda love to see that the halftime. If, you know what I mean? If we really trying to do this, real <laughs> talk, like. I don't know if America is ready for for Moon Honestly, Bitch. Honestly, I out think the way. America would be shocked at how <laughs> ready it is for Luda's <laughs> halftime show. I think America would be shocked. It caught, I mean, Usher caught caught white people by surprise because they ain't really listening to R and B like that. But That's rap, fair. Luda, yeah. stop it. So, but he because he has to play "Move, Bitch, Get Out the Way" it has to be a song. Yes, and. Uh, Obviously, like the uh, the initial single, the um, what I'm, I'm, I'm mad because I'm well, thinking what's of your, what's your fantasy? What's your fantasy? Like those hooks are not uh family friendly. Look here, man. Luda two... just stood up there and said something about double D's, and he wants a lady in the street, but a freak in the bed. I think we can give Luda a pass. <laughs> <laughs> He's got America. A new... Are you ready? Pimp. Pimping all over the world. He's got a lot to do. <laughs> Splash waterfalls? Come on. <laughs> that shit is hard, yo. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that shit hard, yo. <laughs> There's a lot. There's Real a talk. lot. They're going to check our ages before next Super Bowl for that uh, shit, yo. Yeah. No, I think, I, I'm telling you, I think America would be shocked at how ready it is <laughs> for Luda <laughs> halftime show. Yo, real. If we get splash waterfalls for the Super Bowl, be I might, I might like, I'll be, I'll be done with everything. Okay, that'll be like peak living. Yeah, that would be a lot. I feel like we probably should go ahead and end the Super Bowl on that one. Nobody else. It's definitely flipped at that point. We're, yes, we're yeah. watching a concert that they play football around. Right. Yes. Exactly. Hundred percent. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was. The, I thought the some. This is why the Super Bowl was so watched. Like. We go this heavy on just the halftime show. Right. Um, on top of that, you have uh, a guy going for legacy on the Kansas City side. You have uh, the 49ers got to be a top two most popular franchise ever uh, in terms of football. Like you got like the Cowboys, 49ers and the Steelers. Oh. Maybe the Raiders. Like that's like a huge fan base. OK. That, like, you know, like they're, they're a team that like I see their jerseys everywhere. Right, you right, know, right. Even though, like, I'm no way near the area. Yes, um, yes. I, I, those 49er jackets that I kept, yeah, I kept seeing on people, those popular. bomber jackets. I was like, oh, I've been seeing those all my life. It feels like <laughs> straight up, yo. Yeah. So, like, the, it's like a huge fan base. So people are tuning in for that. So there was like a lot of stuff. And then to your point, the addition of streamers. There was a lot of things that like led to that. And then on top of that, the game was competitive. So like, they stayed throughout. We went to overtime. It was the perfect NFL. Like, next year's game can't compete with this. There's, there's too many things that went right. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I mean, unless Taylor Swift decides to date somebody on whatever teams or, <laughs> you know, I guess that's the only way. Uh, it has to be the power of Taylor Swift. <laughs> Again, I say it's not even a quarterback. I, I can't. I just keep remembering how you explain that to me. 
that he <laughs> dude isn't even a quarterback. And I'm, I still am just like, what are we doing? Real talk. Anyway, he had a down year too. <laughs> and he had, yeah. Uh, by the way, for comparison's sake, uh, the uh, finale of Mash got 105.9 million viewers. Um, the day after the two hour movie about the nuclear middle. Uh, nuclear attack on the Middle East. America got a uh-huh. uh, hundred million viewers in 1983. Oh, I remember um, that shit. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, oh, yeah, I guess you probably weren't around for that, huh? Yeah, I, I, that was the year I was born. I don't know. Depends oh yeah, on when no, it, no, when no. Okay, due. yeah, no, I was like 11, so yes. Yeah, nah. It depends. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, Cheers finale had 80.5 and Seinfeld uh, 76.3. Oh, and uh, the 1978 episode of the TV soap Dallas, which revealed who shot Jr. Oh, rock that, on. That was a big one. I absolutely remember that because my mother was a Dallas fiend. So, like, you know, I don't, I only know what that is because of rap lyrics. Oh, wow. Like, I've so never seen the show. Old motherfuckers rapping. If they- Straight up. Like, a whole bunch of rappers will say something to that effect, like, uh, like Red Man was like, who shot JR? I did right in the melon. I don't know what, what he was talking about, but I memorized that shit. So I'm like, Honestly, someone JR got shot a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, no. And I understood someone, that. But I didn't know what show it was for. Yeah, of course it would be Red Man who would say, who would mention who shot JR in a in a rhyme. But yeah, <laughs> there was uh one of the main characters was JR, and he was a real son of a bitch, J.R. Ewing. Because Dallas was about the Ewing family. Oil. It's a whole thing. So J.R. Ewing's yeah. a real son of a bitch. So then it was like, who shot him? Was it his wife, Sue Ellen? Was it uh, his brother, Bobby? Was it uh, someone that he, someone he was cheating on, cheating with on his wife? Or hell, was it his mom, Miss Ellie? Like it was, <laughs> there was a lot going on. Uh, and so it was, and it was a cliffhanger. So oh. you had to wait all, and it, you, there were no spoilers. You just had to, it was 1978. You had to sit there quietly all summer long. <laughs> I'm assuming wait. there's a Sue Ellen in that show as well. Yes. Yeah. That okay. was his wife. Yeah. Cause that was his next bar. He was like, uh, so I could start fucking Sue Ellen. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know? She was, uh, she, she was a lot. She was kind of a drunk. She wasn't, they weren't happy. Anywho. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Red man. <laughs> Thank you for making sure that piece of history is never forgotten. Yeah, thanks. You know? Thanks. Man, if you really listen to a lot of like 90s hip hop, the references, I wonder what people are even, they're like, what is this? Because I'm like, oh, no, you definitely did not see that Tom and Jerry cartoon nah. that he's referencing right now. <laughs> There's no I way you saw that. because of Little Kim. Okay. <laughs> Straight up. I, like, I want to know why, why, they, why when people talk, they look like when... They talk, they listen. Yeah, when uh, E.F. Hutton yeah. talks, people listen. It was yeah. a financial L- L- company. Little Kim said it, like, E.F. Hutton, when I talk, people listen. So, like, okay, like, Those, I got that a, was They were, like, a, you know, like a financial company, like Wall Street kind of thing. And yeah. their commercials would be a couple of people, two dudes in a crowded place talking about financial things. And one guy would say, well, you know, my broker is E.F. Hutton, and E.F. Hutton says, and then wherever they were, like Grand Central, the whole yeah. place would get quiet. And then the voiceover, when you have button talks, people listen. I fully remember that. That's also the, it, that was a perfect intonation, by the way, of what the dude sounded like. When you have button talks, people listen. That's exactly what it sounded like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I already know that because of the Queen Bee. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> yeah, the Beastie Boys had an EF Hutton joke, too. Tell in, their, in their stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Hip hop is keeping history alive, yo. I appreciate them. Uh, in other news, uh, disillusioned Americans are losing faith in almost every profession. That's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yo, Fortune Magazine. Super Bowl. And now, <laughs> the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Uh, uh, to paraphrase uh, Flannery O'Connor, much like man, a good job is hard to find. Okay, uh, and, don't like yo, this, that. This article is dark, yo. Yo, wow. <laughs> but why you got to bring Flannery into this? She got enough problems. <laughs> Let her <It's>, rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, mm. Sell your soul, or at least 
a year and change of your life to the man is no simple feat either, especially in the 21st century, where most jobs feel like swimming through muck as Americans navigate the polluted waters of late stage capitalism. But don't take our word for it. Yo, you came out shooting. Yo. Chloe Berger. Yo, Berger. <laughs> yo, she came out with the guns on this article. Oh, my God. Uh, people across the nation are looking at most professions with narrowed eyes and a level of skepticism. Once reserved for a dog with chocolate on its beard. Yo, she like- really like not letting anything just go straight. <laughs> <laughs> She got a reference for every line right now, yo. Real oh, talk. Wow, she really spitting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, surveying about 800 U.S. adults on 23 jobs. Uh, Gallup uh, from the 2023 Honesty and Ethics poll found that almost all professions have declined in terms of how most people view the moral standards of the workers in them. In other words, more and more of us think most jobs are pretty shady. Uh, The survey, uh, which dates back to 1976, finds that almost all 12 out of 13 jobs have declined in ethical ratings in just one year. Um, Trust has been chipped away over the years to the tune of an average of 6% since 2019. Uh, It's no shock that Americans' belief in the system is dwindling. In a time of increased polarization, especially on the right, many Americans have found the candidates on both sides of the aisle failed to deliver on their lofty promises. Uh, some of the uh, most and least trustworthy of the lot. Let's see. Uh, see if they got a few options here. Boom. Uh, the good, bad, and ugly find a new name in politics. The media and pharmacists, senators, clergy, congressmen, as well as journalists and pharmacists had an especially difficult year as ethics ratings hit new lows. Um, oh, God. Jesus, yo. Most of the Least trusted jobs are held by those in government, as well as people in sales, including car salesmen and uh, advertising uh, practitioners. Okay. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, jobs including dentists, engineers, and veterinarians, uh, uh, nurses have held the title of the profession with the highest regarded ethics for 22 years now. Uh, when the pandemic was raging, nurses were held in even higher regard, but have since dropped in ethic ratings. Even if we trust our nurses, we don't pay or treat them all too well as uh, banging of the pots uh, receded in the wake of the first wave of COVID-19. <laughs> Real respect wasn't reflected all that much in the sector as about 100,000 nurses quit owing t- uh, to burnout. Man. Yo, this is dark. This is very dark. So we don't trust nobody but nurses. Yo. And I don't, mm, I mean, I tr- trust is such a... <laughs> Such a slippery word. Trust? Is that what we want to use? Trust? (laughs) This shit came for the jugular. Uh, This uh, this might be my favorite written article uh, in a long time. (laughs) Yeah, no, no. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is... She came with some heat. Real talk. (laughs) (laughs) Who do you trust? I I, uh, I mean, I've uh, disproportionately trusted my bodega owners. Um, yeah. Okay. I uh. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Why not? Just because I've there are too many. No, not at all. Why? <laughs> Why would you trust them? No. I feel like, I mean, I get my my so many of my sandwiches from them. See, that's yeah. I don't. I well, as you know, uh, I don't eat anything from the sandwich from the deli from any of that. My my stomach will not allow it. <laughs> I've tried and my stomach rejects it every time. Like, you know, you don't do this girl. If you don't just go to a grocery store, buy your own little sweaty deli meat and make your own little bootleg sandwiches. <laughs> Quit messing around with those people back there. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, so I don't trust them to make my food. Right. So now it's just about the stuff you have on your shelves. Right. And it's about what is there that I can work with for what I need, which is usually uh, sugar. I need a straight shot of sugar in some sort of form that I like. That's what I need. Preferably one that is not stale. And that is where the problem lies. Mm. Cause shit is stale all the time or some of them licking their thumb, wiping expiration date (laughs) off of the wrappers of the stuff. It's been sitting there for a long time. I'm the person that's going in. I'm squeezing your candy bars. You understand? I'm squeezing the stuff. 
to see if it's <laughs> giving the way it's supposed to give because I don't trust you motherfuckers. And then you go up to the register and then they just make up a price. Oh, yeah. Nah, we ain't doing that. <laughs> Mm-mm. I was just yep. in here yesterday buying one half of all the fudge rounds you have. Today I'm buying the rest of them and they've gone up. Don't play me. <laughs> Things change, yo. Nothing changed. It's a fluctuating market, Sha. No, no. I'm the fluctuation. <laughs> I'm the fluctuation. The day. The day. I'm, try, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get it before you wipe the date off. How about that? <laughs> nah. It's like when you, when you buy fish at those fancy restaurants. You oh, know the I mean? market rate? <laughs> yeah, the market rate, yo. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, I'm not doing that either. No. Well, so, yo, these Snickers is market rate, yo. Mm-mm. You know? They could change at any given moment. It's just, it's geared towards um, a body that can withstand whatever happens if you eat a bad candy bar. You understand? That's you fair. sell That's that fair. to children, they got, <laughs> they still got the energy. They got the antibodies and the fucking white blood count, <laughs> like blood cells to, <laughs> to fight whatever happens if you get a bad baby Ruth. But you do that to me. I'm losing teeth. <laughs> I am now diabetic. Like, come on. <laughs> so, I agree with uh, trusting nurses. Yes. I, I've, I've, uh, I won't say universally, but I would say overwhelmingly have had good experiences with nurses. Yeah, I, I, I find have that uh, they're like genuinely like if you're as long as you're not being a jerk yourself. I found that they are genuinely good. Like right. they're trying to like do the right thing. And I'm surprised at how often they go above and beyond when there's rarely a perk in it for them. That is true. Like I am blown away by how, like I would say like 80% of the nurses I've dealt with, like will do extra for me. And there's no like extra benefit for them in doing so. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't say that for most professions, uh, either. yeah. Yeah. Like if there's a profession that did it at a higher rate, they were on commission. Like that's the only time I could think of like, uh, Like, I trust most of my waiters, but it's because I know there's, like, a performance-based aspect of it. They're trying Mm -hmm. to do good, but also, like, the incentive is very direct. Right. You know? Um, But I'm still cool with that. Like, hey, like, we're all aware. You do a good job, I'm going to pay you better. So I do trust them. Um, I don't know why I don't trust the doctor, even though I trust the nurse. Yeah. Doctors seem kind of pompous. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just not the ones that are... Uh, when you call, when you call because you need something, a doctor is not rushing to help you. Oh, uh. a nurse is. The nurses are the ones there monitoring everyone, giving all the information to the doctor. Then the doctor breezes in and goes, "Ah, give him a couple of cc's of this or whatever," <laughs> and you know, and they're not really, they're not necessarily asking questions. It feels like. Um, is isn't that interesting to me? Like I, I don't know. Like I find that fascinating. That like we all have like that universal experience of mm-hmm. like we prefer the nurses to the doctor, but we all like are we all want like our kids to be doctors instead of nurses. Well, not everyone prefers the nurses to the doctor. Okay, a lot of people are like, I, I'll wait till the doctor comes here. Yeah. Okay. And then they try to talk to the doctor and the doctor's like, uh-huh, all right, all right. And then they turn to the nurse and the nurse tells them what's going on. And then the doctor just says a thing. And then the people are like, see, you got to do whatever they tell you to do anyway. And like, there are a lot of people who are extremely mean to nurses. That's, mm. that's why it's wild that they go above and beyond because there are a lot of people who are extremely mean to nurses. That's wild. I because love nurses. nurses are the front line. Right. And so they're having to deal with you. And uh, the idea that people are like, you know, just no, only a doctor can help me. It's like, no, a doctor's not going to if you need to get to the bathroom and you can't, a doctor is not going to be the one that helps you. He'll make sure he's not. (laughs) Yeah. So (laughs) I'll do this. And and neither are the uh, the interns who are trying to be like the nurses are the ones doing that. But I mean, if you. If you just, uh, yeah, there are plenty of people who are extremely mean to nurses and only prefer doctors to talk to them. As well. Yeah. Have, so have you ever been mean to a to a doctor or a nurse? 
Oh, no. Mm -mm. My mom, uh, I think, did a little nursing. I have a few cousins that did a lot of nursing. Yeah. um, Which is also very funny. When you see someone who is a former nurse see uh go into a hospital to see some one of their loved ones who's down and then the current nurse comes in and now the former nurse is talking to the current nurse that's some real fucking <laughs> <laughs> yo that is a boxing match <laughs> that is I know a... it's possible I okay. yeah well do you you know and there are so many oh, you know, there are many updates in the thing, but then, you know, so the former nurse is like, well, have you done the blah, blah, blah? And they're like, yes, we have. Well, have you even tried the Like, it's a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then there's a former nurse who isn't anti-nurse. They were a nurse, but they are like, well, they're do you per- even know? Like, how long first. have you even been? Like, that kind of shit. <laughs> so there, I've seen that go down. <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> but yeah, like I no, I'm not going to be uh, mean to a doctor. I have this. I'm the worst because, you know, once I'm in a hospital, I'm just like, all right, well, take care of me. What? You need me to go there? OK. I ask no questions. Child, they could cut a whole foot off and I'd be like, I'm sure it was necessary. I just zone <laughs> out when I'm in a hospital where I'm like, well, certainly they're not just going to lose me. <laughs> I don't <Right>. know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too trusting. Yo, I'm too trusting. I uh I yelled at one doctor. Uh it was on my last I I did it twice though. The last two days I was in the hospital uh when I was diabetic. And mm-hmm. in retrospect, if I could do it over, I would apologize and not yell. Okay. Yeah, like hundred percent. I they were completely in the right. They were like, uh, hey, uh, you're doing much better. And uh you know, we just want to run some tests, but we think we're going to be able to let you go soon. And that w- it was a young doctor. That was mm-hmm. the mistake. They said that. So in my head, I was like, oh, I'm leaving. I'm good. I'm leaving here tomorrow at the latest. Right. You know, and they had taken me out from like the emergency uh, area to like this like room where that I shared with this other dude. Right. And it was just me and him kicking it. We were like stealing yogurts from the nurses area together. That's my homie. Like oh, that's boy. my dude. <laughs> we we was killing it. Me and him uh <laughs> we was doing like stupid shit overnight. Like uh we uh we was trying to like see who could shit in the most unused bathrooms. Like unused Wait, rooms. So you were like walking to other bathrooms to Yeah, like we wouldn't use our own bathroom. We would go to another bathroom. Well, and like use the bathroom, be like, I got 17 and 12, which was you got. And we was trying to like poop in all the bathrooms and all the rooms. Oh my God. It was a fun game we were playing. Yeah. But like, nurses must have loved you. They did. We were charismatic. We were cool. The nurses okay. loved us. <laughs> but like, <laughs> no one calls yourself <laughs> charismatic. You don't, if you were saying I was charismatic, you were not charismatic you were a pain you were a terror <laughs> i think the nurses liked me okay but i i know one doctor did not um, okay was trying to give me she was trying to like the next day she came back said you're doing better but we still want to keep you another day i was like lady i'm leaving today mm-hmm. like in my head I, I i i i did everything i could to not go crazy yesterday when you told me I was doing better, but I needed to stay longer. Mm-hmm. I had 24 hours of endurance left, you know? Right. So, yeah, I'm leaving today. Like, whatever you got to do, she was like, I don't recommend. I was like, ma'am, I'm leaving today. I'll take any test you want, but you got like an hour and a half. Uh-huh. So, like, do all the tests. And she leaves. She was very stressed out. She came back with uh, the whole doctor team. They talked to me as a team. Mm-hmm. I said, I hear you. I'm leaving today. Um, and they like rush job, like nine tests on me. Okay. And the whole time they're doing the test. They're like, yo, uh, just so you know, uh, we don't think you should leave today. Uh, okay. We, we're okay to leave, but we would prefer to just keep you one more day. Um, I'm like, I heard you. I heard the other one. I'm leaving today. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and then like, I get home. And I tell this to Gabby. Gabby's like, you should have stayed the extra day. You were already there. Right. You know, that's the whole point of being there. 
Like yep. you get checked out. They make <laughs> sure you're good. You were already there six days, seven days. Wasn't going to be a difference in the grand scheme of your life. Right. But guarantees there's a grand scheme of your life. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, when I got home after like a week, then I was like, yeah, I should have stayed the extra day. Because like if I'd have felt weird, I would have to go back and redo all this shit. You know? So to that uh, young doctor, my bad. Like, for real. <laughs> like, uh, I can see as an adult, as a parent who uh, would like my kids to get the best treatment, I could see it. In the moment, six days in the hospital, I was losing my head a little bit. I just wanted to see the world again. Yeah, you are saying this as if this happened years and years and years ago, and you have since grown now that you've got kids and, uh, you know, yeah. this literally was what? <laughs> two? Hell yeah. This two was years a, ago? Two years, Sha. Okay. I was an immature 38 year old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know left from right, Sha. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, but now as a mature 40 year old, I see the world different. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> also, what were you going to do? What were you going to do on that other day? What, 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 what did you do that was different? I went home. Like I got, I got to chill at the crib. I just wanted to be, I, I, I felt like I was, it was getting claustrophobic. Like I'd only seen these like hospital hallways and, and, and whatnot for like six days. You know, my okay. phone was dead, so I was I couldn't talk to people. You know, <laughs> it was weird. And like the guy next to me, he figured out how to he had, he some he got a charger in, right? So like he was like updating me whenever we weren't stealing uh uh like uh farmers fridge stuff from the nurses room. Uh huh. He was keeping me updated on stocks, and I'm like, oh. I don't care about day trading this much, my G. But like that's all he talked about. So he was like trading into the night why didn't anyone bring you a charger because they could it was the it was the quarantine so like they weren't letting anyone in the hospital oh. unless they were like in a, in for an emergency okay um, and then the area i was in um a i was healthier than what i was so they didn't they didn't have me in emergency right and b it was specifically for people not with covid so okay. like they were like we can't risk anyone coming anyone in. Anyone coming in. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I was there for like 3 more days with just my homie here, you know, giving me all the latest on like what uh what Bitcoin is doing. Right. You know, at like 2 in the morning he's like, "Yo, the market is going crazy in Japan." I was like, "My man, I'm trying to sleep." Okay? <laughs> I don't care this much, you know. Wake I me mean... up when you want to go steal some Greek yogurt. Okay. <laughs> I guess. I guess I understand. Um so but I, I I feel like I was in the wrong for yelling, but I was but it was understandable. Yeah, I guess so. Uh I I guess so, but also I am willing to succumb to those kinds of circumstances so easily when they're like, yeah. don't go anywhere. I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> nah, I was fighting the power. I was like, I can't mm -mm. do this. Because what was I, I going to do before. out there? I don't, I'm not, I don't do anything. I don't do anything. So if I'm just in, then I guess I'm in. You know, like, that's how it was when they locked it down for COVID. That's how I've been with this bum ankle, you know? I'm just like, oh, I don't, I guess I don't get to go anywhere. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's I needed uh, my corner store. I needed, I needed my block. I needed my stoop. No, nah, I don't need any of that. <laughs> need, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't, I just, if there's a way to have some of that brought to me, then I will figure that out. Okay. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm, uh, if I, you know, if I guess if I had a charged phone, I'm fine. You know, like it's certainly different because I'm in my apartment where things are working and, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But if push comes to shove and it's just me and a candle, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> then I got enough notebooks and a pen that I'll just start writing. And yes, I will go to dark places while writing, but I'll also probably pull up too out of it. But I'll do that. I'll entertain myself that way. 
Hell yeah. But uh, I'm with it. Yeah, but no, if they want <laughs> if they want to keep me in bed, as long as they flip me so I don't get any bed sores, let's do it. <laughs> if you would like. <laughs> Chalet was darkest comedy special coming up soon. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, it's going to get dark. It's certainly going to get dark. entirely uh, in her apartment during her ankle injury. It's going to be crazy. I already have a name for it. <laughs> I do. I ready. actually do. I 100% believe you. Real talk. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be heat. <laughs> All you got to do is like subscribe to the show, baby. If you're an Apple or Spotify listener, we appreciate your ratings. Four stars. You ain't ready for dark comedy, okay? You haven't been listening to the podcast. It's kind of all we do. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh a lot to hide, but there's a lot of pain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Real talk, yo. All these recording sessions is just me and Shy checking in on each other. Yep. That's all it is. Just making That's sure you're good, is. homie. <laughs> Five stars, you with the dark and pain. Hell yeah. Real talk, B. It's going to be the most emo album recording ever. You know what I mean? Wear your favorite black. Okay? <laughs> oh, man. If you have any articles you want us to cover, uh, please DM us directly on Twitter or Instagram at Silky Jumbo or at Gastronomonte. Uh, shout out this week to Lori McDaniel, Bishop, and Brandy Spain. Uh, with all that said, I am the admittedly also... Uh, Writing about uh, aging, Gastor Almonte. You know what I mean? With the ankle injury special. Yeah. Coming yeah. soon. I know. It'll uh, <laughs> it'll be, um, oh boy, it'll just be me seated on the floor. Oh man. The seated stand up special, Shalay with Shaw. Coming soon. <laughs> this has been uh, a crippling episode of The War Report. Catch y'all next time. Peace.